Well, NBC News is reporting tonight that after months of negotiation with prosecutors, quote, President Trump's legal team is nearing completion of written answers to questions posed by special counsel Robert Mueller. That's according to a source familiar with the matter who says that those answers, quote, may be submitted as early as this week. The answers. However, the source says that the answers will pertain only to matters relating to Russian interference in the 2016 election, not obstruction of justice. I'm joined now by Barbara McQuaid, a former federal prosecutor, and Ken Delaney, an NBC News intelligence and national security reporter. Ken, you first. What's the importance of this, that they're going to have these answers apparently within the week? Well, Chris, what we don't know is what's precipitating this. Is Robert Mueller threatening to subpoena Donald Trump and haul him before a grand jury? I think this is part of the negotiation that's playing out between the Trump team and the Mueller team about what answers Trump is going to give. I don't see how it's ten, uh, you know, it's te- it's okay for Trump to say he's not going to answer questions about obstruction of justice, a main part of Robert Mueller's investigation. But that's their position right now, because they believe that that probe stemmed from the firing of James Comey, and Trump had an absolute right to do that. Let me suggest a strategy. They'll say, okay, we'll give you half what you want. You can have written answers, which is nonsense, because lawyers write the answers, and they can all be cleverly written. You can't cross-examine the whole thing. But in addition to that, I got this new guy, Matthew Whitaker, who's my new attorney general, and he's not going to push for any kind of a subpoena, so live with it. How about that, a double track? We'll give you something, but don't ask for more, because I got a guy that's going to defend me. Well, if that happens, Mueller has to report that to Congress under the special counsel rule. So we'll find out about that. And congressional Democrats they have aren't going to stand for He has to that. tell the Congress that they've, that they've shut him down. If they shut him down on any investigative step, okay. absolutely. Barbara, your thoughts about this? Looking at this whole thing, the naming of Whitaker last week as AG, acting AG, the, the word out, according to NBC News, that they're going to agree to some kind of response to these written questions. How does it fit together and how does it advance this whole process of ending this investigation conclusively? Well, the sequence is is somewhat suspect, isn't it? Just as you point out, Chris, we've waited months and months for these answers. I think it was January that Robert Mueller started down this path of seeking information from President Trump. And now that he's got his hand-picked attorney general in place, now he's ready to give answers. And so uh, I think he feels like he's in a position of empowerment um, at this stage yeah. of the game. But, um, but nonetheless, uh, he'll get answers. It locks President Trump into a story. And uh, he can't wiggle out of that for now. I don't think this is going to be 100 percent satisfactory to Robert Mueller, because, as you point out, there's no ability to follow up with uh, follow up questions to observe body language or tone or inflection or any of those things. It doesn't preclude Robert Mueller from seeking a subpoena at some point if he's not satisfied with those answers and to get information about obstruction of justice. But I do think it would help him in any court case to show that he tried to take the path of least resistance and that he tried to get this through negotiation without resorting to a subpoena. Yeah, it also makes Trump look good if he does answer with written answers, because then he tells his 40 some percent of the country, hey, look, I answered the questions. Get off my back. Meanwhile, Mueller's prosecutors appear to be closing on this guy, Jerome Corsi, a right wing conspiracy theory guy with close ties to the great Roger Stone, one of the ultimate fixers. According to NBC News, Corsi says he expects to be indicted for perjury, adding that Mueller's team delivered the news at a meeting about a week ago. Well, this comes after NBC News reported last month that investigators obtained communications suggesting Corsi may have had advanced knowledge that WikiLeaks would release emails, those ones hacked by Russia, from Clinton campaign chairman John Podesta. Of course, he, however, denied having any advanced knowledge. In fact, he told prosecutors he simply figured it out on his own intuition. And now, according to Corsi, he, he appears to have given false information to federal investigators. Let's watch. I fully anticipate that in the next few days I will be indicted by Mueller for some form or other of giving false information to the a special counsel or to one of the other uh, grand jury or however they want to do the indictment. But I'm going to be criminally charged. Well, investigators are also scrutinizing whether that guy Corsi passed any information about the hacked emails to Roger Stone. There's Stone on the right, who appeared to predict the release of the Podesta's emails on Twitter in 2016. Most famously, Stone hinted Podesta's time in the barrel, later saying there was a payload coming just two days before Podesta's emails were released. Uh, Barbara, there's a couple of things here. First of all, Corsi's a bad guy. Corsi's the guy that created the whole swift bug nonsense, destroying the uh, presidential campaign of John Kerry. He also came up with the whole nonsense about the birtherism that Obama was secretly birthed over in, uh, in uh, Kenya or somewhere, or somewhere outside the United States. Uh, this guy uh, is in the cahoots with Trump. How does this 
Is this one of the final dashes of, uh, of excitement to this prosecution or what? Where do you see it in the list of uh, developments that will get to a final report by Mueller? Well, first, nobody gets indicted, of course, for being a bad guy. They would get indicted for some criminal activity, which could be false statements. You know, he's hinted that uh, he's fallen into a perjury trap. But, uh, you know, to make it very clear, people don't get indicted uh, for making mistakes or forgetting the facts. They get indicted for false statements when they know then and there that what they are saying is false. And so he seems like a potential link to Roger Stone, who seems like a potential link to others related to the Trump campaign. Uh, for example, there's already that indictment about hacking that alleged a conspiracy to interfere with the fair administration of elections. If Roger Stone or uh, Mr. Corsi was involved and had advanced information and provided advice about the timing of the dissemination of those emails, that could be aiding and abetting or that could be conspiracy to violate that statute. And so anyone else who participated could also be charged. And so it seems that Corsi finds himself uh, at this, uh, in the crosshairs at this moment because he has information that's valuable to Robert Mueller that he wants to get. And as we've seen, when people lie to Robert Mueller, he is not shy about charging them with making false statements or perjury. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.